Welcome to Japan Politics Explained, where I review recent news and statistics regarding politics and elections in Japan. Today I'm going to talk about Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga's recent approval ratings, a new opponent for the ruling party's leadership race, and why the Yokohama mayoral election is super important. Let's start with Suga's approval ratings. Three videos ago, I told you that the Prime Minister's approval rating is pretty low due to the government's missteps regarding the COVID crisis. While it's grown worse since then, with a series of opinion polls taken earlier this month showing a further decline in support. For example, we see here that the public broadcaster NHK put Suga's approval at a mere 29%, while the left-leaning newspaper Asahi showed a support of just 28%. JNN, which is the news arm of the television broadcaster TBS, put the support rate at 32.6%, while the right-leaning newspaper Yomiuri showed a 35% support for Suga. Although the methodology is different, Digi Press also did their poll and found that only 29% back the Prime Minister. There are several things to take from these surveys. The first is that, as I put in the title of this chapter, Suga did not see a boost in his support following the Tokyo Olympics. The Prime Minister initially expected his support to recover after the Tokyo Games on the back of rising nationalistic sentiment and a reevaluation of the government's much criticized efforts to host the Games. However, with the August surveys showing declines in approval, it's clear that such hopes have failed to materialize. It's important to know that these polls were taken around last weekend. For example, the NHK poll was taken in the three days from Saturday. So Japan was well into the Tokyo Olympics by then and approaching the closing ceremony, which was held on that Sunday. It's not that Suga was wrong to assume that people would change their minds about their opposition to the uh, Tokyo Games once it started. For example, NHK showed that 62% of respondents said that it was good for the Tokyo Games to have been held, while the figures stood at 56% for Asahi, 61% for JNN, and 64% for Yomiuri. So we have a majority saying that the Tokyo, Tokyo Games was good. But what Suga failed to understand was that the support for the Games will not lead to support for himself. This happened for several reasons. First, the surveys showed that despite the general support for the games itself, many respondents replied that the games was not safe and secure as the government had promised. For example, we see here for the NHK, 57% said that the Tokyo Games was not safe and secure. While there are no reported incidents of COVID infections in the general public stemming from the Tokyo Olympics athletes and staff, there is plenty of news of Olympians and staff members leaving the athletes' village to go drinking and doing some tourism in Tokyo. That casts doubt on the government's ability to ensure that the Olympic bubble is maintained. The fact that Tokyo saw record daily infections during the Tokyo Games did not help. We see, for example, here that we see this huge spike here, starting from around, the, this says the 22nd, 23rd of July, so that's when the Games started. Second. Actions and comments by the IOC committee, uh, International Olympic Committee rubbed the public in the wrong way. IOC to uh, President Thomas Bach, whose uh, nickname in Japan has become the Ripoff Baron, made many comments which showed him seemingly oblivious and unconcerned with Japan's COVID measures and the spread of the coronavirus. Um, IOC spokesman Mark Adams' declaration that the Olympic Games and the Olympic athletes are I quote, living in a different parallel world, end quote, did not help, as it gave imp the impression that the Olympians were in their own privileged bubble while the rest of Japan was abandoned. It also did not help that the IOC rejected a proposal to honor the people killed by the atomic bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in the closing ceremony. To top it off, uh, the organization awarded Suga and Tokyo Governor Yuriko Koike the Olympic Order, uh, so basically giving them uh, metal, making them targets of criticisms and aimed at the IOC as well. The last thing to note is that the Olympic opening ceremony was a flop. If people were to tie the Olympic Games to their support of, to the government, it would have been through the perception of the opening ceremony as Japan's victories at sporting events were mainly attributed to the athletes themselves. The general consensus was that the Olympic opening ceremony was mediocre and uninteresting. 
Um, in addition to the controversies that led to the resignations of many members and the planning staff for the opening ceremony, the public was infuriated with the fact that people who appeared in the ceremony were put in as a result of political meddling to curry favors. For example, uh, former Olympics Organizing Committee chairman who got kicked out over sexist remarks and political heavyweight Yoshiro Mori was the person that put in Kabuki actor Ichikawa Ebizo into the opening ceremony, as well as the baseball legend Hideki Matsui, who held on, who uh, carried the Olympic flame before uh, Naomi Osaka lit the torch. Uh, Yuriko Koike also put in a, uh, her group of supporters uh, in the show. Uh, if you remember, in the earlier part of the opening ceremony, there was a scene where uh, there were builders and they were making stuff and people were carrying these wooden giant pole thingies. That's a uh, Yuriko Koike's uh, support group. The fact that a better opening ceremony had been planned only for advertising giant Dentsu, which is close to the government, to ruin it by kicking the original planners out also added to the public anger. With the Olympics uh, gone now, let's go back to Suga. It's clear he did not benefit from the Tokyo Games despite his initial hopes. And with the continued spike in COVID inspections in Tokyo uh, and around the country, he is expected to see his standing worsen. This is a big problem from the, uh, for the ruling Liberal Democratic Party, as it may lead to a loss of many seats for the party at the upcoming election for the House of Representatives, the lower chamber of parliament, uh, which is expected to be held sometime this autumn. Party members, uh, at least some of them, don't want to have Suga leading the LDP into the election. Luckily for them, uh, Suga's term as president of the LDP runs out at the end of September, and he will have a he will have to launch a re-election bid uh, for his party leadership post. Which leads me to the second chapter of this episode: Who is Sanae Takaichi? Oops, let's go back. Okay, so Sanae Takaichi is a lower house lawmaker from Nara Prefecture, and she is so far the only major figure to have declared a bid to replace Suga in the LDP leadership. Uh, you can see her right here. She declared her candidacy in an issue of the Bungei Shinju magazine published Tuesday. Now many of you have noticed that I did not include her name in my earlier video about people who may become prime ministers, and to be honest, I did not expect her to declare a bid at all. So let's take this time to see what kind of person she is. Takaichi is a former internal affairs and communications minister under former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, to whom she is believed to be close with. I think the best way to describe her political ideology is to show you her website, uh, in which she says that her political idol, the person who she looks up to, is none other than Margaret Thatcher. She is a run-of-the-mill conservative with a hawkish view on foreign policy, and a revisionist position on Japan's wartime history. Uh, she, in a television program, she once called World War II a war for Japan's security. She made waves during her time as communications minister uh, by threatening to strip television broadcasting licenses from some broadcasters uh, in a thinly veiled swipe at broadcasters that are critical of the government. With this background, it's possible that some LDP members who don't want Suga leading them into the election may back Takaichi, especially considering that Abe and uh, Finance Minister Taro Aso and economic former Economic Revitalization Minister uh, Akira Amari want to loosen LDP Secretary General Toshihiro Nikai's grip on power in Japan, they may back Takaichi to weaken Suga, who is backed by Nikai. But Takaichi does not belong to a party faction, and she doesn't look like she has enough support to oust Suga at the moment. So whether she, she can do so probably depends on when the lower house election and the Yokohama mayoral race will be held. Which brings me to chapter 3 of this video, the Yokohama race. Suga's chances of defending the prime minister's spot depends on whether he can hold a snap election before the LDP leadership election. If the general election is held first, and the LDP does well, uh, Suga will most likely remain as party leader, while a bad outcome will lead to other big names in the LDP making their own bids. So for Takaichi, the best path for her is if the leadership election is held before the general election. Now Suga is widely predicted to dissolve the lower house in early September to hold an election later that month. 
But since he has not declared it yet, the schedule might change based on when the LDP decides to hold its presidential election. That decision will come on the 26th of August. If the party decides on August 26th to hold the leadership election in, let's say, early September, Suga will have to postpone his plans for dissolving the lower house. So August 26th is a pretty important date. And it just so happens to come soon after the Yokohama mayoral election on the 22nd of August. Running for the mayoral seat is um, most major candidates. Uh, there are three of them. We have, here we go. Oh, here we go. Hachiro Okonogi, an LDP member who is a close ally to Suga. We have Takeharu Yamanaka, a candidate backed by the major opposition parties. And incumbent mayor Fumiko Hayashi and several others, but they're not really important. Polls have shown that Okonogi has a slight lead with Yamanaka close behind and Hayashi lagging way behind. If Okonogi ends up wasting his lead and losing the seat to Yamanaka, let's say, a large part of the blame will fall on Suga as people's negative perceptions of the Suga administration will be what resulted in Okonogi losing uh, voters. And in that case, it'll confirm LDP members' suspicions that fighting elections under Suga is a losing strategy. That may prompt the LDP to schedule the leadership race early. I plan on doing a more in-depth video on the Yokohama election soon, but for now, just remember that Suga's fate hinges on the Yokohama race. So keep an eye on the Yokohama race for hints about whether Suga will be able to retain his position as LDP leader, or whether he'll be forced out and replaced with somebody like Takaichi. Thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and let me know in the comments what you would like to see in my next video.